Hey guys, it's Natalie and welcome to my channel. I'm sorry to all my subbies, I know it's been a while, but my son was pretty sick and I had to take care of him. But I'm glad to say he's doing so much better and I missed you guys and I'm so glad to be back. So today we're going to be making some beautiful fall decor for our home, mine and hopefully yours, by using mostly Dollar Tree items. And if you guys are new or newbies as I'd like to call you, and if you do like what you see, I hope you hit the little heart subscribe button that's on the lower right hand corner of the screen. Also the notification bell so that this way YouTube will inform you when I'm here again. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Natalie Creates Crafts. All right guys, it's been a while and I'm in such a crafting mood. I hope you are too. And let's get started. Our first project is the Happy Fall Garland. You're going to need wooden maple leaves, wooden beads, I used medium and small, Waverly chalk paint in the colors Truffle, Merlot, and Cashew, paint brushes, Crafter Square Jute Cord, Cricut Accessories, Brown Vinyl, and Dollar Tree Clear Contact Paper used for transfer tape, glue gun, glue sticks, and scissors. I started with my maple leaves. Now they're supposed to be ornaments and they have a little hole on the top. So I just used some spackle just to patch up that hole. I believe Dollar Tree also sells some spackle that you can use. So I did this for all of my leaves. In this project, we're going to be using nine of them. Once the spackle is completely dry, I then took my Waverly chalk paint in a color cashew and my paintbrush and I applied one generous coat making sure to cover the face of the entire leaf. I did this for all nine of the leaves. Once that paint was completely dry, I then took the Waverly chalk paint in the color Malo and my stipple brush and what we're going to do is we're going to just lightly brush along the edges of each of the leaves. Of course, as you guys know, I love the dry brush. So we're just going to dry brush it from like the edges, from the center to the edges. You're going to repeat that for all nine of the leaves. Once that is completely dry, we're then gonna take the Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle, and we're going to dry brush again, but this time it's only gonna be just on the edge, just to give it a little bit more color and depth. And you'll do that, you guessed it, for all nine of the leaves. Then I took the Waverly chalk paint in the color Cashew, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to then brush a little bit in the center of each of the leaves just to soften it up a bit and paint over some of the hard strokes that we did with the first two colors. Then I went to Cricut Design Space where I formed my letters and I sent it over to my machine. We're now going to then lift the vinyl and then weed it. I then applied the clear contact paper and this time I'm going to do another technique that I saw taking the paper off burnishing it upside down. This was so much easier to peel. So we're going to take one of our leaves and one of our letters and we're going to place it right in the center of the leaf. I then burnished it and then lifted it. I repeated this technique for each one of the leaves. When you're all done, you'll have happy and then fall. Now it's time for our beads. I took medium sized beads and I used a zip tie. And the reason I like the zip tie is because it gave me a little bit more control with the beads. They weren't like spinning around. This is something I just figure I try and I actually 
liked that technique. I strung nine beads in total and we're going to take the Waverly chalk paint in the color Malo and we're going to give it one good coat and let it dry. I then did two more rows of nine and I took the Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle and I gave those last beads one good coat. These wooden beads I actually picked up at Michael's on sale. It was quite a deal. Now I took the leaves Spelling Happy and the Jute and what I did was I put, we're gonna thread the beads in there, but before I did, I just put a little bit of hot glue right on the edge of that jute, forming like a needle, which made it easier to thread the beads through. So the pattern I used for the garland was a small natural bead, a medium natural bead, the truffle medium bead, and then another medium natural, and then another small natural. This was my pattern and it's gonna go in between each of the leaves. I decided not to use the Merlot. I wasn't that crazy about how it looked. So I cut the jute cord, giving myself just enough to make the garland with maybe about an eight inch overhang on one side. I then took my leaf, flipped it to the back, added a little bit of hot glue, and then glued the jute to the back of that leaf. So this is the pattern that we're going to be doing for our garland. So we're gonna lace the beads, then glue the leaf. I just did it backwards. This way I knew I would have enough jute uh, cord on the other end. But it's pretty simple once you get your groove on. <laughs> So I threaded the beads and glued the leaves, threaded the beads and glued the leaves till I came to the end. Now with the garland for the fall, the one thing I did do different is on one end, I did three sets of the pattern of beads. I did that on either side. Now it's time to adjoin both rows of our garland. So I just knotted the ends. I just did a good double knot. And then I cut off one of the ends of the jute. I then threaded the remainder of the jute with the same pattern with the five beads. Now I took a little bit of raffia, brown raffia, and I wrapped it around my fingers about four times or till the raffia was uh, all used. And then I threaded the jute through, and then I took an extra piece of jute and I wrapped it around the top as you see here. So we're making uh, tassels for the end of our garland, but we're using brown raffia. So then I put in one good knot, or I made one good knot. <laughs> and then I just cut off uh, the excess of that jute. And then I cut the end of the tassel. And then just gave it a trim to make it look uh, even. I then knotted the rest of the jute to the bead where the tassel ended and just cut off the excess. I then repeated the process on the other side of the garland and we're all done. A real quick, easy project. I love the colors, but you can always change out the colors that suit your decor. Our second project are the fall candles. You're going to need three vases, two medium and one large, natural raffia in the fall colors, jute cord, wooden fall stickers, glue gun, glue sticks, and scissors. I started with one medium vase. I then took the colored raffia in that burgundy color and we're going to start wrapping this at the bottom of our vase. So I put one drop of hot glue 
and I attached the raffia to the base of the vase and then I just started wrapping the raffia around the base. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I just put one drop in one section of the vase just to make sure that the raffia will stick. And I just continue to do that with the raffia pieces, adding them as I go. As you can see, it's not perfect. I, I want it to look like rustic and uneven. I continued to wrap the raffia around the vase until I got to about two thirds up the vase. I then glued the end right to the vase. It should look like this. Then I took my beloved jute, <laughs> I love that jute, and I glued it right to where the raffia ended. And then I wrapped that around my vase, I wanna say about five times maybe. I just kept wrapping it around and then I pushed it down a bit. And then I add a little bit of glue, glued that to the vase and then cut off the excess. And it should look like that. Then I took my little maple leaf stickers and I applied them sideways, one on either side, and I just used some hot glue to attach it. And that's pretty much it. So we're gonna repeat the process with the other two vases, but with the taller vase, I decided to use the brown raffia. So it's the same concept, just wrap the raffia about two thirds of the way up the vase, then add the jute around four or five times on top, and then glue the little wooden maple leaves as shown. And so I'm doing my final one with the orange raffia, then adding the jute, and then the leaves. This is such a quick and easy project and it was a lot of fun and uh, looked great. So there's the burgundy, the brown, and the orange. I then took one of my vases and then I added some corn kernels to the vase. Maybe um, about, well, just a little bit, just to cover the base. And then I took a Dollar Tree candle and placed it right in. Now for our taller vase, I wanted the candle to be just to the height where our raffia and our jute ended, just, well, maybe just a little underneath it. So I then tried eyeballing it and then I put the corn in there just so it was high enough so that our candle had the illusion that it was tall, taller than the other candles. <laughs> but you get what I mean. Another fun and easy project that will add to your beautiful fall decor. I loved how these candles turned out. Our third project is the home fall vases. You're going to need four colored Dollar Tree vases, some fall silk flowers, natural raffia, tumbling tower blocks, crafter square cube blocks, jute cord, Cricut Accessories Tan Vinyl and Dollar Tree Clear Contact Paper used for transfer tape, Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Plaster, Paint Brushes, All Purpose Adhesive, Glue Gun, Glue Sticks, and Scissors. We're going to start using the Dollar Tree Right Angled Ruler. I then took five of the Tumbling Tower Block pieces and my favorite all-purpose adhesive. Oh, and I forgot my mat, my little chopping mat. It protects my actual mat, which I highly recommend using. So anyway, we're going to be gluing those pieces lengthwise, and we're going to use the ruler just to make sure that they're all even. We're going to repeat that four times. I took two of the five pieces, the five glued pieces, and I took additional six pieces, and I'm going to glue one on either edge, 
and then the others I'm going to glue in between where the joints meet for the five pieces on the bottom. Once that's dry, then I'm going to take an additional five pieces of the Django block and I'm going to glue them in between the spaces. I gotta tell you guys, I really do love that adhesive. Once that's dry, and then I'm going to apply the glue on the tops of each of those pieces. And then I'm going to lay it down and I'm gonna slide the five piece right above it. Once that's dry, we're gonna take the two five pieces that we glued and we're going to apply the glue on the shorter side and then we're going to glue that right to the edge of either side of the piece that we just made. Once that is completely dry we're going to then flip it and then we're going to use our four little wooden cubes and we're going to glue them on either corner of our piece. I gotta tell you guys I love this glue it dries so fast So once that dries, this is what our little tray is going to look like. I then took the Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster and our brush, and we're going to apply one generous coat. You could apply more, but one coat was just enough for me for this project. Yeah, this Waverly chalk paint really covers pretty well. Once that's all dry, I then took a piece of my favorite jute and I went ahead and I burnt the little phrase off of it. I did measure enough of the jute so that it would wrap around our tray about three times. So then we're going to add a little bit of glue to that one side and attach the jute. I then took the jute and then I wrapped it around our tray, just holding it about three times. Now you could put some glue where you think is needed but for me I just did it from the start of the jute and then I wrapped it around the tray like I said about three times just making sure it was tight and then when I got to the end I just reapplied another drop of the hot glue where I then attached the jute and then just cut off the excess. Now I went to Cricut Design Space where I designed this place, uh, this word rather, <laughs> it says home, using a maple leaf for the O. I then peeled off the excess vinyl and really didn't need any weeding for this one. I then applied the clear contact paper and did that reverse burnishing. I gotta tell you, again, this is so much easier to remove the vinyl letters from the backing. I then took my first face and I cut off the letter H and I then applied it to the base like right at the center, burnished it and then lifted it. And then I repeated the process with the little leaf, the M, and then the E. I know you can't see it with the glare, but when I lift the vase, you can see how the H looks on that green vase. I think it came out perfect. Now we're gonna take one of our vases and we're gonna flip it to the back. And up by the neck, I added a little drop of hot glue and added some jute cord. And then I took that jute and then I wrapped it around the neck of the vase about six times. Once I got to the back of the vase, I just added a little bit more hot glue and then attached the jute to it and then just cut off the excess. I then took a flame just to burn off the fuzzy edges of the jute but just be careful when using an open flame. 
I then took my raffia and I took a few pieces and I bunched them up and then I stuffed them into my vase. I just used a little wooden spoon to shove that raffia into the vase. When I was all done, it looked like this. I then took my silk flowers and I cut the stem down just a little bit so it would fit into the vase. I then just stuck it right in between the raffia and then fluffed it out. Now we're gonna take our tray and we're gonna place all four of our vases. I then fluffed up my flowers and our third project is all done. I love the color of the vases and I love the raffia stuffed inside to hide the stems. It just gives it that really cool fall festive look. I love how this turned out. Our fourth project is the farmhouse pumpkins. I used two ceramic pumpkins, a few fall leaves, Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew, paint brushes, jute cord, wired jute cord, glue gun, glue sticks, and scissors. We're going to start with our ceramic pumpkins. I wanted it to give it more of a country look, so I decided to give it a makeover. So I then took the Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew and I took my stipple brush and I gave it one good coat. I used the stipple brush because I like the lines that it gave while painting over her pumpkin. I did two of them. Now we're going to take, you guessed it, the jute cord. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of glue to the base of the stem. And I'm going to take that jute and slowly wrap it around the stem and just adding some hot glue as needed. When I got to the end, I just cut off the excess. Once it's all done, it's going to look like this. And you're going to do this to your other little pumpkin, since I made two. I then took a piece of wired jute and I took a crochet needle and I just wrapped it around about four times. Then I pulled it out and then I added a little bit of glue to one end and cut it off. This prevents the jute from coming apart from the wire. I then took one fall leaf and I cut about two of, I guess if you want to call petals or pieces <laughs> of the leaf. Then I took those two pieces that I cut off and I glued them together at the top. I then took those glued pieces and I glued them to the base of the stem of our pumpkin. Now it's time to take that tendril that we made and I just glued, put a little glue on one end and just glued that to the base of the stem of our little pumpkin. And it's all done. I love how a little bit of paint and some jute could just transform these into like the cutest farmhouse pumpkins. On to the next project, which is our fall table runner. You're going to need two placemats, laced ribbon, felt leaves, Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew, paint brushes, glue gun, glue sticks, and scissors. I started with my felt leaves and I'm going to take the Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew and my stipple brush and I'm going to just barely put some of that paint on the edges of the felt leaf, just to soften it up a bit. This is with and without. For this project, I used four brown leaves and two burgundy. On to the placemats. I found these beautiful orange placemats at the Dollar Tree and I just couldn't pass them up. We're gonna start off with one and we're going to take our lace ribbon 
and we're going to glue the edges of the placemat using the ribbon. Just take your time to make sure that the lip, the ribbon <laughs> is aligned properly to the placemat. I glued it just almost to the corner and I gave myself a little bit of extra ribbon and I started gluing the other side. This is how we're going to form the corner. So I put a little drop and folded those two pieces down to make a pretty corner. So I continued to glue the ribbon to the top. Now we're going to take our second placemat and we're going to continue to glue the ribbon across. Remember when doing the corners, you want to bring the glue almost to the corner of the placemat, giving yourself a little bit extra, like I pinched it right here. And then when you have that side glued, just pull that little flap down, add a drop of glue, and just pinch and press down. We're going to do the same thing to that bottom corner. Now when we get to the center of the other two, we're just going to adhere the ribbon just like we did to the top. I gave myself enough of the ribbon, trimmed it, folded it over, and then glued it down to match the rest of the folded corners. Now that we have the border, we still have the opening of the two placemats. So what I end up doing is flipping it to the back and I just had enough ribbon left over from the spool and I just put a bead of hot glue right down the center and glued the extra ribbon right to the back to seal the seam. and then just cut off any excess. Now that's done, we go to one side of the placemats where we're going to then glue three of our leaves. So we're gonna put the two browns to the corner and the burgundy one to the center. Now when applying glue, try not to put too much glue on the back because you don't want it to be all bumpy. So I just pretty much glided the tip of my glue gun onto the leaf. So this way the leaf would lay flat on the placemat. I did that for all of the leaves. Now we're going to repeat that process onto the other side of our runner. And that's it. This came out so pretty and who would have even thought two Dollar Tree placemats would make such a cute runner. Our final project is the fall floral centerpiece. You're going to need three of these wire baskets one hula skirt, an assortment of fall silk flowers, floral foam, three vases, two medium and one large, three pillar candles, glue gun, glue sticks, cutting pliers, and scissors. I started by taking one of my wired baskets and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that part of the basket off using my wire cutter. Now make sure you go as close to the edge of that part of the frame of the basket as possible because you don't want any sharp edges. When you're all done cutting it, it's going to look like this. You're going to do this for two of the baskets and when they're all done this is what it's going to look like. 
Next, we're going to take our third basket and this time we're going to cut either side of the basket. Like I said, just make sure that you keep it as close to that frame as possible so that you don't get those little sharp edges. You're then going to repeat that process to the other side. And when that's all done, it's going to look like that. I then took one of the ends and the middle piece and then I added a little bit of hot glue just at the top and then I took a piece of raffia and attached it. And I'm going to use that raffia to wrap both of those pieces of the basket together. This raffia was actually pretty strong and it did a good job. So I continued wrapping that raffia around the two baskets. One piece actually wasn't enough to fit all the way around. So I just continued wrapping it until it was to an end where then I glued it, attached it, and just cut off the excess. I then added a little bit more hot glue and attached another piece of the raffia to finish attaching both of the pieces of basket. I then just glued some to the top, attached the raffia, and cut off the excess. I then repeated the process by attaching the other end of the basket to the main part of the basket. When it was all done, it looked like this. Now I'm going to take my hula skirt and I'm going to dismantle it one strand at a time. It's actually two strands when you take it apart. And I'm going to take those strands and I'm going to take the end of the two strands and I'm going to glue that to the top part of the frame of the basket. And then I'm going to take those two pieces and I'm going to weave them through from the bottom holes of the basket to the top. And I'm just going to repeat this process, making sure I overlap to get full coverage. And then when I get to the end piece, I'm just going to flip the basket on the inside, glue it, and then cut off any excess strands. And that's pretty much how we're going to do it. So now we're going to add another piece, or two pieces if you will, making sure they overlap. And we're just going to weave those pieces from the bottom to the top. We're going to continue to do that through the entire basket. When you get to the raffia where we attach the two baskets, I put a bead of glue and I made sure to cover both pieces on top of the joints. So we're going to continually wrap it. Now when I get to the corner, I do add a little bit of glue on the bottom and I make sure that I wrap a little bit extra. Again, just to make sure that it's completely covered and you don't see any of the frame. For this project, I used about two-thirds of the hula skirt. When we're all done wrapping, this is, this is what <laughs> it's going to look like. But remember, we didn't cover the bottom. So what I did was I took a scrap piece of burlap and I cut it a little bit wider than the bottom and then I just covered it making sure it covered all the holes at the bottom of the basket. I then took the floral foam. Now I did say in the beginning I needed two but we're actually going to use three. So I left one piece solid and then I opened the other two and then I laid them out so that two of them are tall and one wide as shown. I then took my vases and put one in the center and then I nestled the other one to the left in between the floral foam and I repeated that to the right. 
Now it's time for the florals. So I grabbed about three different kinds of flowers. Um, now I'm no floral arranger by any stretch of the word, but I did the best I could with what I had. I did end up cutting the ends of the stems so this way the flowers were, they were beneath the vases when I was done arranging them. I then took additional flowers, cutting them individually and just placed them wherever there was a space. They're so pretty. I then used these as fillers, but I didn't particularly care for the little grassy part that came with it, so I just omitted it. And then I just took those pieces and again, just filled them where there was maybe an empty spot. I just kind of eyeballed it. I also did that with these just to give it a little bit more of that fall color. Then I added some kernels into each vase about a third of the way, and then I placed a candle votive in each vase. Now, I know I've said I've loved my projects, but this by far is my favorite. It is just so pretty, so fall, so festive, and using mostly Dollar Tree items, that will always be the best part. Thanks so much for being here with me today, guys. It really means a lot. Remember, you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Natalie Creates Crafts. I hope you subscribe so that this way we'll be seeing each other next time. Until then, happy crafting, God bless, and take care.